Wings and splitters are all very well on the racetrack, but what's the point of aerodynamic downforce on the road? The popular opinion on the internet is that there is no point in having downforce on the road. On car forums, they'll tell you how it adds drag, how it reduces top speed, how it increases your MPG, and how it can ruin your car's ride quality. It begs the question then, as to why so many fast car manufacturers have been devoting so much time and money into improving aerodynamic performance. Admittedly, they've gone about it in different ways. Um, Lamborghini seem to favor a sort of active aero approach. Porsche have gone completely bananas with the latest GT3 RS. Ferrari seem to have favored a more discreet approach to generating downforce, working a lot more with the airflow underneath the car rather than bolting on wings and splitters. But one thing they all have in common is that their claimed downforce figures have gone through the roof on their top performance models. With the new GT3 RS offering only a modest increase in horsepower over its predecessor, it's in the aerodynamic performance that the big stride forward has been taken. So is all of this done just to improve the Nürburgring lap times? I know that's very important to the marketing department, but I think there has to be more to it than that. So for what it's worth, here's why I would like to challenge the popular view that there is no point in having downforce on the road. As it happens, my two road cars currently make considerably more downforce than my racing car. Now I won't pretend for one moment that I wouldn't like the CSR to be making downforce, but it's not permitted under the regulations I race under. But that doesn't mean to say that downforce generated by the road cars I have is completely pointless and going to waste. Here's why. Most road cars, even today, generate lift. This isn't usually much of a problem on slower cars that rarely go much above 70. Cars have also gotten a lot heavier, which means you have to go a lot faster to generate enough lift to really notice it. But for the more recent crop of high performance cars that can get to three figure speeds in the blink of an eye, it is definitely more of an issue. So for me, the real benefit of having a car that generates downforce on the road is not for increased grip at high speed, as it would be on the track, it's for increased stability. Now the beauty of gaining weight as you gain speed is that when you lose the speed and slow down, you lose both the weight and the stability. So a car like an Elise still corners and handles as responsively as you want it to at low speed but with the full aero parts that you get on the cup car you have an Elise which is nearly 70 kilos heavier at 100 miles an hour and it drives more like a heavier more stable car at high speed. This in turn allows engineers to dial in a more aggressive more responsive suspension geometry which makes the car more agile at low speed because they know the car is going to gain stability with high speed. So this is why the Elise Cup cars are both more agile and more stable at speed than a regular Elise. And I suppose the benefit of this is if you are doing a longer journey with plenty of motorway miles, you'll find that your Elise Cup 250 is a bit more long-legged than you might have imagined. The car becomes a bit more relaxed and composed at higher speeds. And you certainly get the benefits if you're driving across France, never mind Germany. The Evora GT430 also cruises remarkably well for something so extreme and so track-focused. 
it really settles down at higher speeds and feels rock solid and reassuring. Now traditionally GT cars have done this by combining a hefty curb weight with low geared steering. The trouble is when you slow down or when you get to your mountain roads the curb weight and the slower steering is still there. Unlike with an aero car that curb weight disappears at low speed giving you the agility you want in the mountains. Of course it's not quite that straightforward. Cars that generate downforce tend to need firmer suspension but that's where adjustable dampers can really come into their own where you can soften the car off of the road and firm it up for the track. Aero cars tend to have less ground clearance particularly at the front which tends to make them less practical for daily use. So there are lots of good reasons why you wouldn't want the compromises that come with downforce on your Golf diesel. And Elise owners who never go above the legal speed limit and have no interest in track days aren't missing out on a great deal either. But in my personal experience, downforce is a very desirable thing to have in a high performance car, even if you don't take it on the track. So there you have it. Feel free, of course, to agree or disagree in the comments, but the next time your know-it-all car mate points to a huge wing on a car and says, what is the point of that on the road, you might like to send him a link to this video. Thanks, as always, for watching.